Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what part of the world you're in. And um, welcome to the first Cichlids and Coffee for the new year. And um, I appreciate you joining in. I noticed some of you were early. That's a good thing. And a happy new year to all of you. And um, here's a toast to uh, 2021. I hope it's uh, perhaps a little less interesting than 2020. <laughs> So uh, let's take a look here at uh, let's take a look at who's aboard here. Looks like Elijah Davis. Hello, Elijah. Hello, Theodore. R. Baglio. Hello, my friend. Tony. I see Denny's on there. GP is there. Hello, GP. Hello, Denny. Remco. Hello, Remco. Nice to see you again, Andrea. It's really good to hook up again. You know, I missed I missed all of you, and I really missed these these uh, live streams, these chances to interact this way. It's a bit, um, you try and make it personal, but it's a, it's a bit impersonal when you're, when you're filming a video to, you know, just a camera, and then you throw it out there and then gauge the response. I mean, this, this for me is a lot more, uh, you know, it's just a lot, lot better overall. And uh, I really thank all of you who've hung in there with me. The channel... Uh, did okay, you know, in that time period. I think we're 34,000 subscribers. We've gained about 1,000 a month. It's It's been moving at a good pace uh, during my, uh, what I'll call my fishless cycle. <laughs> Had no no fish, no tanks, and uh, but the uh, fish fish channel was still doing, doing okay. And uh, hello, George. George F., good morning to you. Just my fish. I saw your earlier comment, and uh, no, that's not what I was doing. <laughs> oh, boy. Heath, hello, Heath. And um, I am going to be taking up some of your questions. And uh, hello, Cardiff, United Kingdom. Lee, thank you. Thank you so much. I think it's the afternoon over there. So uh, I think this, this time change moving to central time is most brutal on the Pacific, my Pacific and any... Anybody in Hawaii, it's very early back there. But uh, I think for UK, it worked out perfect. I'm in um, Central Time, Nashville, Tennessee now, and two hours later than where I was before. So um, first of all, hey, hey, Frankie and Candy. Hello, Candy. Thank you so much, Candy, for sitting in. You are very appreciated. All my moderators, big shout out to the moderators. These are volunteers that help to keep the... the uh, Keep the live stream going. A big shout out to them. Uh, GP, Kevin, I'm not sure if Kevin Green can make it this morning. I Hopefully he can. Uh, the wonderful Candy, Denny, um, you know, you folks, uh, you know, you folks rock. I really appreciate you. And I'm glad you help out. And um, an, another uh, special shout out to my friends, uh, my, my friend Dwayne Barnes. Dwayne Barnes, I don't know if you're here and I don't know if you'll ever see this video. But thank you very much for what you did for me and for the channel. And just a special thank you to Duane. And also um, to my friends at Expertmatic. Expertmatic who have flooded me with, uh, with filter equipment uh, to help out with the new fish room. Thank you, Expertmatic. You are very appreciated. Those of you interested in Expertmatic, I've put out lots of videos on Expertmatic. And um, let's take a look here at the... Uh, at the chat real quick and see if anything jumps out at me before I jump into today, today's topic. And uh, I'm wondering if anyone knows how views can go down on a video. It's not like someone can, I don't know, just my fish. I've I don't know how videos can go down on a video. I've never seen that before. Uh, maybe if YouTube, uh, Maybe if YouTube realized that the person had uh, bots, bots watching the video, maybe they would bust the person by taking those views off. I don't know. I've never, I've never heard of that before, though. Uh, partial views are usually called a view, Jay, even if it's just for 30 seconds. And um, this is why um, it, it's a bit comical when you get trolls. You know, I have about four or five folks who I think have the uh, notification bell. Uh, set up for my channel 
so that they're notified when I get a uh, when I post a video. They come over, they don't watch the video, they just put a thumbs down and they go off. And uh, I don't know what, what what kind of life they lead. Probably a pretty sad one. But they um, uh, but those count. They count as a view, and uh, and it actually helps the channel. So uh, <clears throat> for those of you trolls who were perhaps um, attracted to the title, uh, Fish Room uh, Setback, I'm sure that would attract a troll who is like, oh, good, something bad happened to Ben. Um, I just want you to say, I just want to say thank you. And uh, <laughs> troll, troll, troll your boat, keep trolling. So um, let's see if anything else jumps out here before I jump into the uh, topic. And what other fish can you put in with discus? Thinking of some kind of schooling fish. Anybody here experts on discus? I mean, you see a lot of cardinal tetras. I was talking about neon tetras, but someone said that they can't really tolerate the high temperatures that a discus likes to live in. And so cardinal tetras came out as, uh, as more of a uh, desirable fish. But, you know, that seems to be kind of the standard. I'd like to see something different. Maybe some lemon, maybe some lemon tetras, maybe, um, maybe a whole bunch of zebras, maybe some, I don't know if those water parameters would match up, but uh, zebras, of course, they school very nicely. So maybe something like that. And um, Andrea, if you look over my shoulder right here, nope, sorry, over here, those are real plants, and um, that is the South American, Central American tank. I am hoping that those fish are not going to be as destructive to plants as African cichlids are. I, uh, I picked up some driftwood and some, um, and some real plants, and I uh, glued them on with uh, super glued gel. You have to make sure it's gel. Dries very, very quickly and is aquarium safe. And um, the fish seem to be leaving them alone. And uh, I'll go over in more detail what's happening there. And also, um, I have a piece, a driftwood piece with live plants being uh, done up by Elite Cichlids. Elite Cichlids contacted me, and we started talking. And they're going to put together a piece of driftwood with some plants, with some live plants. So it looks like elite cichlids might be getting into the live plant uh, retail. We'll see. I, I will certainly uh, uh, graciously accept it and put it in the tank, and we'll see how it looks. But I'm anxious to get into live plants. I've ordered some, um, some of the plant food from the aquarium co-op, and I'm hoping that that actually um, will help. Let's see if there's anything else here that jumps out at me. And... Hey, Ed. How are you, Ed? Hope you're doing well. James Adcock, good morning to you. And Greg McPherson, hello from South Africa. Wow, that's awesome. And uh, Richard, hello, Richard Maloney. And Andy McCorkle, I guess it's pronounced. I hope I pronounced that right. Good morning. Let's see. TN Aqua, good morning to you as well. And Andrea, I'm not going to try and pronounce your last name. Are you going to use light? Okay, that's the one I just uh, answered. And let's see, Rico Stan. Hello, Rico Stan. All right. Hey, Tony. Good to see you here, Tony. Always appreciated. By the way, you know, I owe some of you some stickers. And um, I just want you to know that they're, they're boxed in the move box, what's behind the camera right now, which I'm not going to show you. <laughs> But the move box is behind me. Those stickers are in one of these boxes. And when I find those stickers, those of you who I owe stickers to, I will, I will send you some stickers. And I noticed that today, David uh, Baker, David Baker, if you're still on the uh, live stream, uh, PM me or, or email me your mailing address uh, to ben.o.cichlid ben.o.cichlid at gmail and I will go ahead and I promise when I find those stickers I will send you some for being the early bird and uh, aquarium analytic hello thinking of setting up a 75 gallon with a sump is this overkill um, 
I love sumps. I really do. And I would say no. I would say no. I have a, the 90 that's come, that's being made for me over at uh, aquarium um, at uh, glass cages here in Nashville. <laughs> that aquarium is going to have a sump. I'm going to uh, uh, get an overflow box and take one of my 29-gallon aquariums that I picked up at that dollar per gallon sale at Petco. I'm going to turn that into a sump, probably mostly sponge filtration and um, more on that in a minute. But no, I don't think it's an overkill, especially if you're going to over, if you're going to real heavily stock it, I think that extra water volume of a sump, you know, which would take you up to about 100 gallons in, uh, remember the solution to pollution is dilution, right? So, so you'll have that extra water volume uh, diluting nitrates, uh, any possible ammonia spikes, things like that. So, um, no, I don't think it's an overkill. I think you're right on the edge. I recommend sumps usually for 100 or greater, but um, 75, well stocked, a sump would be a, a good thing. A sump, uh, some people are intimidated by a sump. Just, just imagine a giant hang on back filter that isn't hanging on the aquarium, it's just on the floor. But it's basically just a big hang on back that's on the floor. It's, it's getting water in, it's pumping water back after it's run through some media. So it's not really that intimidating. It's nothing to be afraid of. If it's set up right, it's almost impossible to overflow. If you have the right safeguards, which I cover in my, uh, in my sump playlist, especially the mo most recent videos on that playlist, I talk about how to um, really not have to worry about a flood. So... Uh, Let's see here. We got 109 views with the earlier plan. Blah, 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 blah. Over 100, that's good. Whenever we're over 100, I love it. Looking for tank mates for my new 75 cichlid tank. Have a pair of juvenile GTs. Let me see here. GTs. Tell me what a GT is. I am new to the South American, Central American. Tell me what a GT is and maybe I'll be able to help you out there. I'm looking right now, I'm looking at what are called heroes, uh, South American, Central American fish, heroes. I'm looking at um, viejas. I'm looking at a chocolate cichlid. I'm still looking for a nice green tear. And um, so those are the things on my shopping list. And uh, right now what I have, what I picked up, if you saw my last video, uh, what I picked up is I have a red spotted severum uh, in here right now. I have a, uh, a couple geophagus. And, uh, and I have a little electric blue Jack Dempsey, which I really liked. And then I found out later, uh, well, probably, uh, it seems like I, I was, I fell for the glowfish. I fell for the glowfish, Okay. And it seems that a uh, electric blue Jack Dempsey is a, uh, a genetically modified fish that will have a short lifespan, seldom reaches a large size before, you know, before dying. Uh, so it looks like I fell for the glowfish. But um, he's very cute. I like him. He's getting, getting along okay with the other fish. What was the, uh, the big setback that was discussed? or mentioned in the, uh, in the thumbnail. What was the big setback? Let's get into that. And uh, before we do though, let's, we haven't done our official, our official start. All right, now it's official. <laughs> so what happened was, uh, this is the setback. The setback was this. It, it, looked, like, it, it, it looked like the, um, like the Fritz product was, was really working. Uh, the, the fish, the test fish, I called them test fish. Some of you referred to them as you know, can canaries in a coal mine. Uh, I went out and bought some inexpensive fish at, at PetSmart, Petco, and uh, they were doing fine. The firemouth um, was doing well. The, the, the strawberry 
over my shoulder here is actually one of my favorite fish. Very interactive, very cute. Uh, really follows me around when I'm in here in the, in the garage. Just a very cool little fish that I really like a lot. Uh, so, okay, looked good. Let me go out and get, get, get some tank mates. Let me, let me up the ammonia production to make sure that I capture all the beneficial bacteria that I've added with this Fritz product. Let me make sure that I'm providing it with enough food. Let me go get some more ammonia. And by more ammonia, I mean, let's add some fish. The only fish I found for the, for the African cichlid tank that, uh, that I felt I, I liked was, was a redfin borlei. And he's, in, he's back here somewhere and having a good old time with the uh, strawberry and uh, seems to be doing okay. So I add the new fish, I add the strawberry, I add the, I add the two severums, the red, uh, red spotted, uh, I'm sorry, the red spotted severum and the two geophagus and the electric blue. I add them to, to this tank here. And uh, two hours later, the fire mouth is dead. I'm thinking, okay, what, what's going on here? Now, am I gonna now have my expensive, you know, spotted severum and my geophagus, you know, go belly up on me is, is so I'm, I'm running tests, you know, very minute ammonia, but I am putting in, you know, very small, very small amounts of water changes because you don't want to mess with the tank when it's cycling. You want to leave it alone, really. And I am putting some, some, uh, you know, a little bit of safe, a little bit of Fritz complete just to kind of take some of the stress off. So I'm thinking, okay, these fish are going to start dying on me. Am I having an ammonia spike? The tests don't show that I am. I'm showing, nit I'm showing nitrates. If I'm showing nitrates, that must mean I'm, you know, things are moving along. They're cycling. I've, get, I've, got, I've, got, I've got the cycle going. So it was a bit of a scare. I almost called off the live stream. I thought, you know what? I'm not going to do a live stream and have a bunch of dead fish over my shoulder. So I panicked a little bit, not really panicked, but I became a bit concerned. I started doing more water testing. I, um, you know, added a little bit more safe and it looks, it looks, you know, fingers crossed, knock on wood. It looks like they're fine. They're doing okay. The uh, fire mouth might've been a little weak from the beginning. Uh, pet, Pet, uh, Petco offered to take, you know, they have this 30 day guarantee. You can freeze the fish and take it back with a water sample. I wasn't going to go through that for a $3 fish, but, uh, at any rate, I was a little bit alarmed, but it looks like they're doing okay. The geophagus, a little hard to see them against the white substrate, but it looks like they're all doing okay. They're eating, they're active. They're, they're moving around and um, a little bit a little bit in shock right now over the lighting, but overall they look they look okay. So fingers crossed. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about what's what what I have going on right now. The um, I received the lights, so I have two 48 inch beams work, two 48 inch beam work lights on top of each tank. I love these lights, Beamworks, for the price and for the, you know, for the lumens, for the spectrum that you get, I think the Beamworks lights are a good deal. So I got two 48 inch Beamworks uh, and I have those, uh, those plastic condensation covers. And I'll tell you something about these condensation covers. If you decide to buy them and use them, First of all, they trap a tremendous amount of condensation. I mean, the water accumulation under here that would be in the air right now is, is enormous. You, you lift them off the tank and go like this, and the water comes pouring off of them uh, you know, from the inside. So I do recommend them. However, if you need to cut them uh, for equipment, uh, let's say in my case, I added two Marineland Emperor 400 hang-on back filters. Those are big, hefty filters. They 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 require three 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 and a half inches, uh, you know, of space. 
into the tank, into the top of the tank. So if you cut these, you have to make sure that you cut them so that this side here is the side that is over the water. If you cut them and this side is over the water, the cut side, it's going to sag. It's going to sag and you're going to have water over the top of it. So to prevent sagging, make sure that when you cut the amount of space that you need for your filter and then the cut side is at the front of the tank. So this is, this is the way it is right now, laying on top of the tank. And this supports what's over the water so that it doesn't sag into the water. And uh, that's my tip on those. Uh, if you have the money, look, if you have the money, go with glass tops. Glass tops are the best. They, they hold condensation. Uh, you know, they hold the water in. They're uh, sturdy. They're very good if you have jumping fish. You know, they're not going to let the fish jump out. Uh, you know, there's a lot of plus points. They clean, it cleans up really well. It doesn't block your lighting. Uh, glass is like, you know, glass is king when it comes to, the, to an aquarium lid, in my mind. If you want to go on a budget, you know, something, if you want to go for something very inexpensive, this, this is a great, a great alternative to glass and uh, to some of the lids that you see sold out there from retail outlets, uh, even your big box stores uh, sell these lids and they're very expensive, very, very expensive uh, in my mind, you know, for what you're getting. So uh, let me turn this down just a little bit. Okay, so <clears throat> so the tanks so the tanks got their lighting. They got their hang on back filtration, and I put some plants in. I put in the African cichlid tank here. I put in some elite cichlid plastic plants, and um, I've given up trying to use live plants with African cichlids. I tried it before. You can see my video called "The Truth About uh, Live Plants." in an African cichlid tank. It was a video I put out a while back. It was fine when they were small, and as they put on size, they just tore them up. So I'm not even gonna try with African cichlids, so I just went right, right directly to the uh, elite cichlid plastic plant plants that I had laying around. And I like the way they look, and uh, it, gives the, you know, it gives the fish some places to hide. It adds some color to the tank. I know some of you are hate plastic plants, that's okay. Uh, that, that's, that's totally, I understand it. Uh, I, I don't mind them. I, I, I used to hate them until I started dealing with the reality of African cichlids. And, uh, and I wanted some color. It gives the fish a place to hide. It gives them a, a break in the line of sight so a fish can kind of chill out and relax a little bit. And it adds, I think it adds uh, an aesthetic, you know, something pretty to the tank. So I don't mind plastic plants. That being said, I much prefer, I much prefer live plants. And here in the uh, Central American, and, and who knows, maybe I'm in for another lesson, right? Always be learning. <laughs> Applies to me too. <laughs> but you can see here, I've got some Java fern, some Java fern, and some Anubias that's been glued to pieces of driftwood that I picked up at, um, aquatic critters here in Nashville, and I glued it on with the, that super glue gel that I mentioned earlier. Regarding the uh, substrates, I'm really liking these substrates, the, 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 um, the naturals, the naturals from uh, Carib Sea, this one here, very white. Uh, it will show any detritus, any waste is gonna show. So I am gonna be adding, um, I'm going to be adding power heads to both tanks to suspend the waste and get it over to the filters. And um, that's going to help, I believe, in keeping this looking the way I want it to look. The, the substrate, the Carib Sea Aragonite black and white substrate in this tank is very, very forgiving. And um, it, it, it just doesn't show waste. It just doesn't show it, and and so for that reason, it's a it's it's a it's a great. It's just a very forgiving, very easy to work with substrate, 
And, uh, but I'm going to be putting a power head there too. So I can, so again, suspend the waste, get it over to the hang on back filter or over to the sponges that are in the expert Matic filters that are hanging on the wall. Now remember, remember that the system that I'm using, the filtration on, on these tanks is for the most part, water polishing. It's, it's water clarification. It's working well. I didn't wash either one of these substrates. They were put in, a plate was put into the, into the tank and water was poured onto the plate. So nothing was stirred up. The tanks were filled and I haven't really had the cloudiness that you normally see after adding you know, substrate. Now, certainly if I was adding substrate to a filled tank, they'd probably still be cloudy. I had an empty tank and a plate, right? To break up the, uh, to not stir up the, the sand. So I ended up with clear tanks. So I, I really love this, this substrate here because it, it is so forgiving and uh, it's also a lot, even though it's called sand, it's very coarse. It's a very coarse piece, a lot less likely to get into a filter. My filter intakes are, are about midway. Usually I like to have them lower so I can pull some of the low oxygen water from the tank from the bottom and, and circulate it, oxygenate it. But I'm, I'm running my intakes at about mid midway because I don't want sand to be kicked up and go into and destroy the uh, motor of the filter. So... Um, I'm very happy with both the substrates. I like both the substrates a lot. By the way, if you want to pick up one of these mugs, go to my Teespring site if you want to pick up one of these mugs. One of these sweatshirts, great way to support the channel. And another great way to support the channel is to use the Amazon link, the Amazon link that you see right here, to go to Amazon. If you buy anything from my store where I recommend a lot of products, or if you go anywhere on Amazon after using that link, uh, the channel gets a small percentage, your price stays the same. It doesn't increase your prices. Great way to support the channel. You can also go to Teespring. It's noted under every one of my videos for uh, stuff like this and the mug and the new, the new line called It's a Fluid Situation. And uh, that's the new line of sweatshirts as well as the always be learning sweatshirts as well. So that's the uh, commercial, as well as if you're new, be sure to hit that sub and that notification bell. About 75% of the folks who watch the videos are not subscribed. So, uh, hey, why not? You can always unsubscribe if, you, uh, if I offend you. <laughs> All right, so that's enough for the plug. Have you, do you guys notice the sign? One of, my, uh, one of my sons had it done for me, beware of cichlid. I thought it was kind of funny. So um, that's what's going on. Uh, I'm in, the, you know, it, in this cycling period. There's, there's water testing, there's monitoring, there's water conditioning. There's uh, very small water changes, not to disrupt the cycle much, because you want you know you you want that ammonia feeding the bacteria. It's a it's a it's a bit of a it's a balancing act period, and I'm watching it very closely, and uh, you folks will be the uh, first to know how it evolves in the way I've done it, and um, and also keep in mind as I was mentioning earlier that my filters are for clarification, are for, are for really just for the removal of, of floating particles. The beneficial bacteria is going to be primarily homed, and this is just the route I'm taking with these tanks. I'm, I'm, I'm counting on the bacteria to live primarily in the deep substrate that is in each of my tanks. I talk about this in a video, uh, beneficial bacteria, where is it really? And um, maybe Candy can put a link to that video, beneficial bacteria, where, where is it really? And um, this is really old school thinking, uh, thinking that some of the salt 
Water keepers are very familiar with using a deep substrate as the home for the beneficial bacteria, then leaving the substrate alone, lightly vacuuming it from time to time, not going into it, simply vacuuming, vacuuming by lightly going over the substrate with the vacuum, pulling stuff up, not going into the substrate, leaving it alone so that bacteria can, can start to populate with the goal, with the goal of eventually having uh, some beneficial bacteria deep in the substrate that is anaerobic and that can help convert nitrates and give us a true full nitrogen cycle and, uh, and help lower nitrates that way. Doesn't mean you'll ever, you'll ever be free of doing water changes, but uh, it is the goal I'm going for. If you have familiarity with running a tank that way, I'd love to hear your comments. Either right now in the chat or under the video if you catch it on the replay. So um, let me take up some of your questions and see what you've got on your mind. I'm taking a look at the chat here. 227 viewers, hey, welcome everybody to cichlids and coffee. And if I've missed any super chats, I haven't been looking at the chat. Super chats are a way that you can throw a little, uh, a little money at the channel. It's available uh, over at the chat area. You're familiar with it, I'm sure. And if I've missed a super chat, I'm sorry. So let me take a look here and see Denny video is good and volume is good. Thank you for that. That I did notice that earlier and didn't comment, and I appreciate that because sometimes you get a, a bit of a sketchy. And this is the first time I've ever broadcasted from uh, from the garage. So I I was I did a what's called a speed test to test the Wi-Fi, and it came out very strong. So I'm hoping that uh, that that holds on. Hey Tom from Malibu, yes, I miss the California coast. Hey, hey uh, Josh, Josh Cunningham. If you're not familiar with Josh, check out Cunningham Cichlids. Very legit. The man is all in when it comes to providing quality fish. Just My Fish says that geos are a good fish to put with cichlids. With cichlids. Now you see, I like that. I like that idea. Uh, to me, the shape and um, the constant sifting of a geo and the flowing, the flowing fins, just a beautiful, beautiful fish. And uh, uh, you get the discus and then maybe get some of the geos that don't get so enormous so that the discus remain the uh, centerpiece of the tank. That could, be a, that could be a very good thing. Thank you for that, Just My Fish. RC Woody 24, good morning from Alabama. You're not, I'm closer to you now than I was before. Hello, King Kong, Eddie Webb, hello. Let's see, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in. And I'll work my way through the chat and I will get there. T-Bone, good day, Ben, glad to see you're back. I missed you, T-Bone, I missed all of you. And uh, love the live interaction and, and being able to talk and know that somebody is actually listening and uh, as opposed to just speaking into a camera and throwing it out there, like I mentioned earlier. And Luke Kennedy, 4 p.m. on a Saturday. Are you in the UK, Luke? That's a good time. Let's see here. Candy, asking for you to hit that like button. <laughs> How many likes do we have, Candy? All right. Just my face. Let me see. Andrea, what's that big plant on your on your on your tank? The big plant is a artificial plant from um, from a company called Elite Cichlids. They make very high quality artificial plants. They were actually florists originally and decided to get into aquatic products. So they started doing artificial plants for tanks. Uh, they've been a, a big ally and supporter of my channel, so I do promote them. And they do, you know, they do send me free stuff, full disclosure. 
Uh, they're good folks, very committed to high quality. I like their plants because they secure them with a slate, with a slate base, so that the plants don't go floating around. You, you push them into the sand and they stay there. It's a nice big square slate base. And, um, and now it looks like they're going to be getting into live plants too. So these are from, uh, from them. And these are some live plants from Aquatic Critter over in, here in Nashville. Uh, why W Lee one zero seven six six? Anyone that does that is a sad, sad individual. You're right. I agree. I mean, imagine being somebody who has a notification on, and and I know that they do. And I tell you why. I'll post a a fifteen minute video, and in the first f minute after it posts, where nobody could have had a chance to watch it it has a few thumbs down. So there are some trolls out there in, in Trollville uh, that are seeing the notification, coming over, hitting a dumb thumb down, and then going back to Trollville. So anyway, that is a sad life. Hey, Liberty Bell. Flameback Tetras. I've got to take a look at what those are. Flameback tetras. Not familiar with those. Ed, you rock. Thank you, my friend. But you're wrong. You rock. <laughs> Falcone fun. Yes, it is good to be back, my friend. Yeah, Aquarium Analytic. Um, look at Look at some of the the more recent sump videos in my sump playlist. The very first ones were, were a little hit and miss, a little sketchy. I was learning as I was, po as I was posting. So if I had to recommend, look at the last, maybe the last third of those videos in my sump playlist, uh, most recent ones, and you'll see my recommendations, including how to set up the intake and uh, you know, the drain lines and the, and the return lines so that you can't flood. You can't flood. If you set it up right, you can't flood. Unless your sump cracks, breaks, or your tank breaks. But what are you going to do about that, right? Daniel Velez, Happy New Year to you too, my friend. I'm really looking forward to a good year. I think we're all due, right? We're, we're due for a good year. Even though some folks are having a good year anyway, I think the owner of Amazon has made more money this year than ever. Some companies are doing really well. Others are suffering terribly. Let me see. Okay, so Caroline Fritz 7. I would say that Fritz 7 is... Um, Fritz 7 worked. I would call it it worked because uh, certainly in this tank, it, it, it's been a smashing success. In this one, I lost the, the, uh, the original fire mouth. And I'm not sure if it was the Fritz 7 that failed or if the fish was just weak to begin with, so I'm, I'm, the verdict is still out on that. I also know that the substrate that I added to this tank came with a big bio load. It was that bio complete. So it comes with a lot of bacteria in the substrate. That might have helped. The, uh, the, the carob seed does, naturals does not come with, with uh, bacteria in it. So maybe this tank had a bit of a head start. But overall, I would say that the uh, Fridge 7 worked and uh, I would like to say hello to Elise. Hello, Elise. Hope you're enjoying the, uh, the live stream. All right. My substrate is three inches, T-Bone. Three inches substrate. And so you need, uh, you need a, good, a good amount of, uh, you know, you'll need, uh, you know, several pounds. You'll need several pounds of substrate to get three inches. Uh, the tap water here is comparable. It's very, uh, I'm, I'm answering a question from Mandalore Ale. Mandalore Ale, which is where the Mandalorian goes to have his brew. The Mandal uh, it is a hard water. It is a very hard water. 
Uh, so very uh, good for my African cichlids, probably not so good for the uh, South American and uh, Central American. However, uh, the fish seem to acclimate since they are very often bred locally, aquarium bred, right? So, uh, and the plants and the driftwood is going to help to, uh, it's going to help to lower that pH, I'm hoping. Um, I've got two pieces of driftwood in here now. And uh, more, more is coming. As I mentioned earlier, Elite Cichlids is making a very large piece that's going to fill that side of the aquarium with live plants and, live, and, and a piece of real driftwood. There's my red spotted severum. Red spotted severum. And if you say it's the poor man's discus, I'm going to punch you in the nose. <laughs> No, I'm not. Just kidding. <laughs> For some reason, when I mention Severin, a lot of people, uh, Severin's people feel they have to say it's the poor man's sickly. <laughs> All right. I'm going to the very, uh, to the most recent part of the chat to see your questions. And, but before I do that, I want to thank you, Super Chatters. Thank you very much, Super Chatters. Remco, thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. And um, GP, thank you. Thank you for the, for the support. It's always appreciated. And Richard Maloney, thank you as well. I drilled holes into the intake tube of my Emperor 400 and added a huge sponge. It's a monster filter now. The inside media lasts much longer. Yeah, you're basically using the uh, that that sort of pre-filter, uh, pre-filter technique, which I like. It does give a lot of life. I like it a lot with canisters, because um, you can take a canister that you were servicing maybe every month, and uh, now you can service that canister three months, five months, six months. You crack it open, it looks pretty good, uh, because the pre-filter is doing a lot of the heavy lifting, and uh, breaking detritus down. Uh, into very fine, fine particles that then go into the canister. So the canister can run a lot longer between servicing. And I love canisters, but uh, I think Bob, uh, Bob on his live stream was talking about, they're a pain in the butt. They're, they are a pain to service. Uh, I've gotten it down to it's like under half an hour because I, you know, I have a, a procedure I follow. You can see it in my canister uh, playlist. You know, my canister servicing is, you know, pucket up, pucket up, pucket up. You know, I, I move pretty quick and I get it done. But still, it, it's, it's a bit of a pain. And these big canisters uh, are heavy. You know, they're, they're bulky. And so, um, so, yeah, anything you can do to lengthen the time. And a pre-filter is a great way to do it. I do it on my fluval. I will be running the fluval on the larger, on the 90-gallon tank that's being made. That's where I'm going to run the fluval. So um, I think that was a good move, Richard Maloney. I think that was a real good move. Josh, anytime, Josh. You're, you're one of the good guys in the hobby. And um, did I catch all the live stream? Oh, I'm sorry, did I catch all the super chats? Am I caught up? All right. Solar King Ronnie, Abby Normal. Are you referring to Young Frankenstein? Whose brain did you bring me? The person's name was Abby Normal. <laughs> Classic movie, Young Frankenstein, Mel Brooks. <laughs> All right, so Andrea, how can I treat ick fast? Raise your temperature gradually. Raise it up into the mid 80s. You'd be surprised how these fish can tolerate that temperature uh, without too much stress. Go up to the mid 80s. That's going to break the um, the ick reproductive cycle. In other words, when the ick you know falls off of the fish and then hatches and then they they swim back up and attach, that cycle is going to be broken because it can't complete at 85 degrees. So uh, raise your temp, and um, I, I do a two, 
I do two steps. I raise the temp and I use um, Ick Attack. It's very gentle. It's safe with, um, you know, with scaleless, you know, with fish that are, you know, sensitive, invertebrates, things like that. It's very safe. Uh, Corden makes it and uh, you can see it at my Amazon store, Ick Attack. I use Ick Attack and I raise the temp and Ick disappears immediately. Not immediately. Uh, usually in about two or three days, you see it scaling way back. And um, one of the reasons I loved having clown loaches is they, they're sort of like Ick barometers. Because they're, they're considered a scaleless type of fish, they will show that kind of uh, a situation way ahead of everybody else. And so they, they give you a, a heads up. You, you attack it very quickly. Uh, pun intended with the ick attack and the and the increased temperature i would never see it jump to the fish i would catch it on the clowns and then have it scale back and never really get onto the fish to the other fish so uh, that's my recommendation catch the fish keeper those 255s behind you looks uh, sweet side by side yeah see with me sitting here in the middle it looks like I've got a 120 gallon. Uh, <laughs> I've got a 120 gallon tank behind me here, so um, or 110 rather, if my math is correct. So um, did I miss a super chat? No, I didn't. Okay, Jerry Cook. That's great, Jerry. Jerry moved across country last month from Minnesota to Arizona, taking all my tanks and discus with me. I'm happy to report that all are doing well. Now, that is awesome. And, and you know, what, what I'd love to know and what probably a lot of folks on this chat would like to know is how you got them there. Did you use coolers? Did you use uh, portable air pumps? Uh, what did you do for, for the temp? How did you control the temp? Was keeping them in styrofoam. Um, I mean, that would be uh, something I'd be I'd be curious about, because that's that that's awesome to go from Minnesota to Arizona, especially with uh, fish that are uh, you know considered a delicate fish, a touchy fish like discus. So um, very well done, very well done. Jerry Cook moved across at ab abolished aquatics. It's always present. Yeah. I think if you're commenting about ick, you know, I, I have heard that. I've heard that there are lots of, you know, there are a lot of pathogens that are, you know, bacterias and things of that nature that are in our tanks. And just like there are levels of parasite in the gut of, every fish and probably every human. I mean, the question is, if you weaken the fish, if the fish is stressed, let's say you're messing with the tank too much, you're, you're messing with the pH, you're, you rapidly change the temperature during a water change by adding ice, ice cold water, or who knows? Something occurred and you stress the fish, they weaken and then those things that are in the tank in the fish can take hold and the fish become sick so i have heard that theory that there that that stuff is there it's just a matter of keeping your tank as healthy as possible with good uh you know good husbandry good good fish care mnc aquatics yes i am glad to be back and i'm glad you're here let's see hello joe munoz and hello, Carl Heller. Carl wants to know where you used to live in. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say J.J. Francois. When you do a water change on a big tank, do you dechlorinate for the whole tank or just for the new water? That's a lot of dechlorinator and it uh, and it makes bubbles. Um, on the dechlorinator that you're using, it will tell you what to do. It'll say 
if you're going right from tap to tank, what to do, and it'll tell you if you're adding, for example, buckets. Now, if, if you use something like Seachem Safe, a quarter teaspoon, a quarter teaspoon treats 300 gallons. So um, I, I, I treat for the entire volume of the tank, and I go from temperature matched tap, I use a digital thermometer, I temperature match the water coming out of the tap, then I switch on the python, and it fills up the tank, and I'm adding the conditioner as it's filling to the area where it's filling. That way it's getting dispersed with the water flow that's coming into the tank. And I treat for the entire volume. It's not a lot of, a lot of conditioner when you consider that a quarter teaspoon can treat 300 gallons. If you, are, if you have a concern about, let's say your city just added a ton of chlorine uh, to the water after a big storm or something, you can change that. You can up it maybe a quarter teaspoon for 75 gallons. Still, it's a small amount. So um, if you're using a hose, consider Seachem Safe. It'll go a real long way. It is something that's being offered at my Amazon store. And I posted the, uh, I posted the link earlier. Let's see here. On things like, um, on things like Fritz Complete, you're going to need a cap full for 55 gallons. Now that's, that's going to run through and prime too. Prime also, you, you're, you're going to run through a lot of prime. Uh, but um, so I think if, if, you're, if you're budget conscious, nothing beats Seachem safe. If you're budget conscious. Uh, if you don't care, I'll tell you, it's pretty easy just to add a cap full of prime. That's, uh, that's pretty easy. You like that sign, Frankie? Beware of cichlid. <laughs> gift, a gift from my oldest son. All right, let's see. Any, any other questions for me here? How long do you quarantine new fish? Uh, these tanks right now are quarantine tanks. Uh, as I'm adding brand new fish, it's all a brand new thing, so I'm putting in new fish right away. Normally, I quarantine uh, for one month. Uh, the term quora, someone pointed out to me, quora is four, four weeks, uh, one month. One month is my normal quarantine period. Uh, if I, I don't treat during quarantine, I know that Cory, um, or over at the Aquarium Co-op, has a quarantine medication mix. Some of you like to do that. Deworm, check for parasites, treat for ick, you know, maybe some general cure, maybe some... Uh, Metroplex, things like that. I don't, I don't treat unless I see or, or I'm concerned about something. I just watch them in quarantine. That's just what I do. Uh, certainly what Corey does is fine. The, uh, but one month, and then I introduce them to the tank. I introduce them in a dark tank. I turn the lights out. I add the fish. The tanks are temperature matched. I add the fish in a dark tank, I let them chill for 24 hours in the dark, and then I turn the lights back on. And uh, when the lights come back on, it's like, oh, hey, are you, who are you? You must have always been here. Okay, business as usual. Normally. So, um, Richard Lewis, what is that tap safe name you just said? Are you talking about Seachem? Seachem safe? Seachem safe? I just happen. This is Seachem safe. And this is another product, a good product, Fritz Complete. Mm -hmm. 
both of them are good. You're going you're gonna to get more mileage out of a powder that you mix. You have the additional step of having to mix it. So um, if you don't want to mess with mixing, then go with the liquid. But you're going to run through a lot of that liquid. If you have big tanks, you're going to go through a lot of it, especially if you're treating for the volume of the tank. So um, I like safe when I get up into the, you know, the 100 tank, 100 gallon tank. Um, I'm looking at a 200 gallon right now. I'm looking at several other tanks. When I start getting into those sizes of tanks, I'm not going to use liquid conditioner. I'm going to use safe. Uh, I've had 100% success with it. It's never, never failed me. LKB Pythons, thank you for the $2. I appreciate that. And live rock in fresh water. Um, I'm not really sure what that means, live rock in fresh water. I know that live rock is a big deal in the salt in the in the salty community, in the saltwater community. And I know that if a rock has been in an aquarium for a long time, you can transfer that rock to a new tank and put it in in treated water, not just tap water because the chlorine will kill it, but it'll transfer beneficial bacteria to a new tank. So maybe that's live rock, but um, I'm not, I don't want to answer because I think you might be referring to the live rock that is used in saltwater aquariums that's sold in, in uh, aquarium stores. I don't think it'll hurt. You know, one time I bought substrate that was for saltwater tank use. And I called the company and I asked them and they said for African cichlids it was okay. It actually had some salt in it. African cichlids, uh, the theory is that they evolved from saltwater fish which is why they're so colorful. The, the ocean, the, a piece, you know, the, the land masses changed, the water levels dropped, and you ended up with, with the rift lakes. And so these, over time, these fish adapted to, fresh, to become freshwater fish, but they have a high salt tolerance. So um, this is why some people uh, like to treat with salt, and uh, these fish can handle that. Some people treat ick with salt. And I remember attending a talk that was uh, given by Corey, where he talked about how if they continue to ban, if they continue to ban antibiotics and medication in the fish world, like they've done, I believe, in Australia, in the UK, it's very hard to get your hands on strong meds. And uh, what Corey was talking about was that salt might be our only, our only way of treating fish. So. Uh, What about using crushed volcanic rock only as a substrate? Seems to be porous with open pores. This is from Mitch L. You know, I've thought about that, and I've had some people ask me, how about a layer of volcanic rock with sand on top of it? And um, the truth is, is that I want an area low in the substrate that has no oxygen, or is very low in oxygen. Not no oxygen, but very low, low oxygen, and very low water movement, which goes hand in hand with low oxygen. That area in the substrate uh, is going to be developing the, the anaerobic bacteria. If I put very porous rock down there, I'll probably get more circulation going. I'll also create a, um, an area where a lot of detritus can settle and uh, that can get pretty messy. Might be good for plants. If the plant roots get down there, that might be good. But it's, it's a little bit contrary to the, uh, the theory that I'm operating off of right now, which again was discussed in that video, in that video, Beneficial Bacteria, Where Is It Really? You can, you can find that video on my playlist. Beneficial Bacteria, Where Is It Really? That's the theory that I'm operating off of with these tanks, where I'm using filtration only for water clarification, removal of particles, right? Polishing water and the actual BB, the beneficial bacteria, I'm hoping is gonna settle into the substrate, the deep 
substrate bed, sand bed that I have in the tanks. All right. So it looks like the chat is, uh, is going crazy. Let me back up a little bit here and make sure I didn't miss anything. And... Chevy Fish, I love the red spotted gold severum, one of my favorite large cichlids. Yeah, beautiful fish. I also saw a, I think it was a red shouldered severum. Man, oh man. I joined a uh, Facebook group called, uh, I think it's called Severums or Severum Keepers or something like that. And so now I'm getting this, this eye candy showing up on my Facebook feed with these beautiful severums all the time now. Austin Radio, you're making me laugh, Ben. I just purchased an FX6 because of your videos from my 220. FX6, are, those are battleships. You're not going to regret it. Uh, do, uh, and I, I, I say this not, not to rag on FX, on Fluval, but you should have a couple spare valves because over time, that is the part of that filter that will fail. Keep in mind, you're running a very high pressure system 24 seven. So I don't fault Fluval. Maybe they could make them a little more heavy duty, I don't know. But that purge valve at the bottom seems a little bit sketchy to me. So I suggest you have an extra purge valve and maybe a cup, maybe another valve, maybe an in or out valve laying around. In the event that you develop a leak, you can swap it out very, very quickly. But otherwise, they are battleships, and I I I love the the job it was doing on the on the 100 gallon acrylic that I had back in California. That that fluval again on the what will probably end up being a planted discus tank. That FX6 will be used for for water polishing, a very very high end water polishing unit, along with probably a hang on back. And uh, again, I'm going with a, a deep, a deep uh, substrate. The Ick Attack um, Autism Radio, Ick Attack uh, does not, it doesn't seem to impact the beneficial bacteria. And that's, that's a question that came up with Corey at that talk. I think it was Costa Mesa Fish Keepers, Costa Mesa. It was a Costa Mesa like fish club that I went to go to see him at a talk in Southern California. And he said that he hadn't run into any noticeable impact uh, from meds onto beneficial bacteria. In other words, you were, they were medicating a tank was normally not followed by a, a crash and a spike in ammonia, which would indicate that the, that the tank was recite, was starting to cycle again. So he didn't seem to have any concern. And Ick Attack is a very gentle, uh, as far as meds go, it's probably one of the most gentle ones out there. Richard Lewis, thank you for your comment. Very appreciated, my friend. Let's see. I'm, I'm going. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling the uh, comments. That's good, Denny. That's good. Denny got a forty-gallon breeder and uh, with seven juvenile uh, Tanganyikans. Use the. Uh, Fritzime 7 and reporting all as well. How long has it been up and running? I mean, that would be my question. Did you experience any kind of a, a blip, a momentary crash or a hiccup? How long has it been running? And uh, before you felt like you were really in the established, you know, safe zone for your aquarium. That would be my, my question. I hope that I'm getting into that zone now. Erwin Torsi, dechlorinate water. You don't need dechlorinators. Just add an airstone in that water and 
let it bubble for a couple hours. Now, Erwin, one thing that I, that I and, and you can comment on this, Chlor, when they're adding the chlorine to water, that would gas off, that gas is off. And I can see what you're thinking. With an air stone, what would normally gas off naturally over 24 hours, with an air stone is gonna be accelerated and will gas off faster. I get that. But I've heard that uh, chloramine, which is another additive that has recently been a part of just about every major city. They're adding chloramine. Chloramine does not gas off. Chloramine, C-H-L-O-R-A-M-I-N-E, chloramine. It doesn't gas off. And it can actually um, harm your fish. So I get what you're saying. Check and see if your area is adding chloramine. If they are, don't count on things uh, gassing off. Going through your chat, going through the chat. Michael Butler, my Malawi breed, and within one hour they eat these eggs. Any idea why they're not being chased? Wow, I that's I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, Josh, if Josh Cunningham, I would call him a master breeder. Uh, if uh, if him or maybe somebody like a James Largo or someone like that was on the chat uh, they could answer that better than I could there's something going on there they shouldn't be doing that uh, Luke Kennedy on the biohome ultimate the only thing I could I could comment on that is uh, yes I've used it I found it to be very stable and a very good media However, I never used it in the volume suggested for a heavily stocked uh, African cichlid tank. So check with, uh, depending who your supplier is, uh, check with Pongaroo or check with uh, Great Wave Engineering here in America, in the U.S., if you're in the U.S., and, uh, and make sure that you have the right amount in there that is recommended for your stock level. And, and then over time, they're saying you can get a full cycle. I've seen a few people on YouTube say they got it. I've had a lot of folks also say they didn't. So I wasn't counting on it for the full cycle. I continued to do water changes, and uh, but I found it as a biomedia to be a very good product. Alfredo Fernandez, good morning from Mexico. Happy... Mexico City, Happy New Year, and may all the projects come through. Buenos dias, Alfredo. Gracias por uh, venir. Me da mucho gusto en verte. Many of you don't know that Spanish was my first language. Hello, Roy. I hope to visit Scotland someday, but I'm not going to go into two weeks of uh, quarantine first, so I'll wait until the madness is over but I do want to go to Scotland. Yeah, you know, uh, J J JJ, Francois, those bubbles are, are, uh, are pretty normal, especially when you're introducing, you know, water that's been temperature matched. But you know what, they go away. They go away after about a few hours. You can also, you know, if you have a magnet, you know, a magnet cleaner, you can also just lightly rub the glass or tap the plants it all and it dissipates but it will go away after a few, you know after a little bit it is annoying while it's there thank you richard Chem matrix does the same as biohome let me see, Erwin Torsi, Seachem Matrix does the same as Biohome, not convert nitrates because you need a big sump or slow flow rate filter systems. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I've seen. I've seen it work in, in big sumps. And um, uh, 
and on the matrix, I've also heard folks that say that some of the pumice that you can buy, and I've talked about this in prior videos, sometimes you can, you can buy volcanic pumice, very similar to uh, matrix. You might get the same results. Stay at home mom. Hey, stay at home mom. How are you? You have, it says here, I have 80 pounds of dry rock in my pool pond and it's excellent for stabilizing the water parameters now is that the same as live rock is dry rock the same as live rock and um, interesting Solar King, Ronnie, I'm very lucky in New York. I have to add nothing to the water. I use no chemicals to buffer the water. Comes out at, yeah, you know, New York water, I tell you, coming, I think, what does it come down from? The Adirondacks, that's some good water there. Andre, hello from Portugal. Hello to you, Andre, beautiful country. Love to go to south, the south of Portugal. The Algarve, someday, was doing maintenance on my FX4, Hoses included, they're full of garbage. The flow became much better. <clears throat> That's awesome. Yeah, it's a good, Fluval makes a good product. No, you know, I, I don't think that the shape of the Fluval hoses is conducive to, you would think, because of the ribbing, because the way they're ribbed. But I don't, I, you know what? I've seen the, the, the clear plastic smooth hoses. I've seen those be really gunked up too, so I don't, I don't necessarily think that the fluval design is bad. I, I do know some people have swapped those hoses out, but you know you sort of need that kind of flexibility for the way the fluval hooks up. I think if you tried to use a smooth hose for the way you bend it around into the tank, you'd probably get a kink. So you're probably stuck with those kinds of hoses. Uh, but I, yeah, when I've cleaned them out, I haven't noticed more gunk than I would notice when I clean out the smooth hoses on something like a sun sun. So I think those hoses are okay. Lumpy Dog Candy, the world's best moderator. You're right. She is the world's best moderator. <laughs> Every, any YouTuber who has the pleasure of having Candy moderate will agree with you. And that's not a knock on Denny and GP and Kevin Green. Candy is the king of uh, multitasking. We talked about this just recently. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. We're already past the hour mark. I want to thank all of you for coming to my first, my, first, uh, my first live stream in my new home. And I thank you for the support you've given me over this time period. And I thank all of you who uh, super chatted and helped support the channel that way. Very appreciated, and um, be sure to visit the uh, Amazon store and pick up some swag, pick up some coffee cups and things of that nature. That definitely helps. Uh, be sure to hit that uh, that bell. That really helps as well. And uh, come on over to Facebook. We have a real uh, helpful group there at Ben O Cichlid. Ben O Cichlid, and follow me on Instagram. Ben O dot cichlid for some behind the scenes and uh, I post pictures there that I don't post anywhere else and uh, thank you everybody you are appreciated you really do rock and I really appreciate the support you've provided and thank you moderators and again thank you Duane uh, Barnes for your uh, for the special help and thank you expert Matic and elite cichlids for reaching out to me and offering some help uh, you are very appreciated. Thank you, folks, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.